All right, well, I, I want to go one more quick round, in the, but I, I can't let you go without that. something you bring up. He's 100% Paint, Paint Creek and all those white voters. I want to get your reaction to not so much the story itself, but certainly kind of almost the meta story of, you know, the Post chasing down this, what, what Christie so diplomatically called the Endgate story about the sign with the racial language, the, the, the alleged sign with the racial language, uh, the family hunting lease, um, you know, what, what was your response to that story? I mean, and I have to ask, did it feel a little weird to see the Washington Post break that story? And do you think it is a story that would break in the national press and not the Texas press? Uh, I'll, I'll take it first, if you'd like. Um, <laughs> first of all, uh, being a, you know, a child of the South and having grown up in, in Southeast Texas, um, I, I was flooded with all kinds of emotions when I came into this story or read this story and um, I thought actually Wayne and Christie did a very very good job of like putting this into a larger context um, and I, I think that that it, it is it's the kind of story that really is nuance filled and needs to have a lot of context and it's it's multi-layered and it's just as complicated as the experience of race in the South always has been and I think on the one hand I look at that and I think, you know, Perry's not like a racist and sitting around dropping the N-word or, uh, you know, that, that's kind of ludicrous. But on the other hand, he has been accused over the years by critics of, of using race in a way that's inflammatory. Um, if, if I put out the call right now, I'd really like to see the 1990 ad. I can't, I can't get a hold of it. I'd love to see the 1990 ad. Uh, in which uh, Jesse Jackson, the, the, the endorsement by Jim Hightower of Jesse Jackson became a big issue and it was an ad that some people said was like a Willie Horton it's ad. It's out there. It's out there now. Uh, well, I can, it is out there now? Yes, yeah, somebody, somebody had it up yesterday. Oh, gr okay, well, good. I have not seen it. I've been wanting to look at it. There were two it. and they've dug one out. Yeah. Okay, well, we, got, we, got, we had the one up that had a picture of it, but not the ad that uh, was straight up on the oh, endorsement. The video there, and yeah, okay, exactly. Okay. That I haven't seen. Um, but uh, there's also, you know, the confed dancing a little bit with the Confederate flag issue and the Sons of the Confederacy license plate. I mean, the list goes on and on. You know, and yet on the other hand, there's all of this. Uh, you know, he's appointed the first. Uh, African American Chief Justice of the of the uh, state Supreme Court, highest you know member of the court, and um, I, I do think uh, that the Washington Post story was a went a little long, and it was a little bit of like you know what did he know and when did he know it? When really you know having grown up in the South, it, it's you know, if you don't, if you haven't visited a racist landmark, then you probably didn't spend very much time here. Christy? Yes, the Texas press would have covered it. Um, but probably we wouldn't have written a 50-inch front page banner story on it. And this is because, unfortunately, we grew up in the South and we know that there are racially named landmarks. Matter of fact, I think John Stewart pointed out there, there are some in upper state New York. There are, they are unfortunately all over the place and it's part of, of uh, uh, checkered history that we have. That, um, that Perry saw the sign and within a soon period of time his family painted it over and everybody else is mistaken about um, whether they saw it then. The New York, uh, um, excuse me, the, the Post interviewed 12 people and their recollections were pretty shady and all over the map about when they saw it, if they saw it, and how, how it. So um, what it does, though, you could, you could say, um, uh, uh, you know, I, I, here's a thought, you know, um, Barack Obama was painted as a racist based on his Reverend Wright and, and, and damn America. And so that was seen as, as, a, as a kind of a reverse racism that was unfitting. Um, he was associated with it. Rick Perry is associated with this. And the question is, are you ready to believe it about this character or, or, or about this person? Because he's, he's not well-defined yet in the national 
dialogue, and that was his danger. He came from a southern state, and he is somehow associated with this word, and how does he dig out of that? Now, Jay was kind enough to point to a story that we did that, that looked at what is his, Rick Perry's true history with race in this state, including political uh, uh, commercial that he's run that he hasn't been able, he hasn't been afraid to, to raise race as, as a kind of a tacit issue to, as, a, as a code word to his followers that this guy is really liked by this far out radical black Jesse Jackson and that's not who you want as your agriculture commissioner. Um, but at the same time he's been very proactive in, in uh, promoting uh, minorities in the Republican Party where he could find them. And he has, um, and the irony is that he's being attacked on the right for his more moderate stances on immigration and well, being welcoming to Hispanics in Texas. So um, to, to some extent, Perry is being attacked now on the left and the right on the issue of race. So that puts him in a very difficult situation. But once again, it's, uh, his, his narrative is not well known nationally, and now he's associated with this, this word and, and his campaign, I don't think, I, I think it was their first test of the, the explosiveness of how you cannot control a presidential campaign. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I, the only thing I would add just sort of anecdotally is that, you know, the night, uh, the night after that, um, both, uh, you know, Jay Leno and David Letterman, just right out of the gate, are making jokes about, you know, about Rick Perry being a racist. You know, uh, Leno said something about, uh, you know, he was, he was talking, because Herman Cain had come out and said he was the one who really sort of jumped on it and said that it was insensitive and everything. And, uh, you know, Leno said Herman Cain would rather go hunting with Dick Cheney than, than Rick Perry. Uh, and, uh, you know, so, I mean, that's, sort, that's the sort of stuff. I mean, we all know It's taking an that, easy one, but okay. Yeah, 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 right, right. I mean, that's the sort of stuff that, you know, sort of seeps in um, through not just, you know, what you read in the newspaper, right. but it's a it's sort of a cultural thing, too.